Okay, so you may not have a website yet, or you might not actually like how your website looks right now. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some tips on how to use your contact form on HoneyBook as your website. And your contact form will help you with getting new leads and keeping track of new business offers. Hi there, my name is Jessie, and I am going to share with you some tips on how to use HoneyBook to create a powerful lead generating landing page. You heard me right. If you're not using HoneyBook, well, you're missing out on one of the best tools for you as a food or event professional. So whether you're just getting started or you already have been using this platform, you will get something out of this video today. If you're new to this channel, definitely wanna subscribe because I love to share everything that can help food and event professionals level up their business. So today's conversation is gonna be about HoneyBook contact forms. I love the flexibility that HoneyBook offers when it comes to customizing different parts of your business when it comes to marketing yourself powerfully. So today I'm gonna to give you three things to consider when you're wanting to create your lead generating, money making, landing page, or contact form within HoneyBook. The first thing I wanna to discuss today are some of the common mistakes that I find that happens when people are generate, when people are creating their contact forms. The first one is that you're not branding your contact form in alignment with your brand. You want it to be that when someone clicks on your website and it says contact, that you're going to your contact form, that it doesn't look like this out there type of landing page. You want it to be the same colors, the same types of imagery, so that people know that this is a legitimate site. So when you're creating this as your landing page, you may not have a website quite yet, but you may already have brand colors, you have your logo, you have really great information about your business. You want to integrate that into your actual contact form on HoneyBook. The next mistake is that people don't use images. You have the ability to customize this on HoneyBook's platform. So why not use that level of customization on your actual contact form? They have different types of version, they have different types of layouts when it comes to adding images, but you wanna make sure that you have images on your contact form. If you're using a platform now that does not allow you to customize it, that's a good indication that you may need to switch. Another mistake is that I find that people don't have any information about who they are, what you do on your contact form. It legit looks like a Google Doc or Google Form that people just put in their name and information and that's it. You will find a better transition for people when they hit your contact form, when it's well designed so that they know these are the type of services that this person offers because you don't want to assume they know all about you or they know everything that you offer. Don't make assumptions because as Samuel L. Jackson say, when you make assumptions, <laughs> you know the rest. And the last mistake that people make is that they have too many questions. I'm saying this uh, from being on the event coordinator side. When I'm looking for vendors and I go to their contact form and they have 30 questions, <laughs> I don't answer them. <laughs> I probably get off of their page or I just put in some random answers just so I can get through it. You don't want people to feel like they're having to fill out this life-changing questionnaire because you're trying to avoid getting on a sales call with them. You don't want too many questions on your contact form. So these four mistakes are very common. I've seen them. You may be guilty of it right now, but I just wanna make you aware that these mistakes can be costing you getting new leads because no one likes to answer a whole bunch of questions. If you don't tell us what you do, we're just getting onto your landing page or your contact form confused, or there's no images that can't sell someone on why they want to work with you. And then the last thing is that you have no branding. 
Next part of this video, I wanted to actually take you to my laptop to share with you some of the great features that are on HoneyBook contact forms. Yes, I'm excited about this because I have used a lot of platforms before, a lot. I've been in business for over 10 years. I have done multiple businesses since I was 22 years old and now I'm 41, so it's been a long time. But with that being said, a lot of platforms I've used before for various businesses did not give me the flexibility to customize my actual contact form. All right, so let's get into designing your contact form. So some of the features that I absolutely love about the HoneyBook contact form all comes down to you being able to customize your contact form. So I'm gonna start out with a blank one just so you can see how easy it is to do. The first feature that I love about HoneyBook is the ability to add photos. So whenever you're on a contact form, you'll see this plus sign, which indicates that you can actually add an element onto your form. So clicking the plus sign, you would then click content and you'll see the different types of content fields that you can actually add. I love the fact that you can choose a image that's going to fit you and your brand. So I often say it's important to have a header image on the top of your contact form that allows for people to have that wow experience the first time that they come onto your contact form. You can create these on Canva or some other platform, but I think that this is something that will catch someone's attention. You can upload it into this specific field. And as you saw, you can move it up and down. The next feature that I think is amazing is the fact that you can do a full width text or you can do columns, which really helps you with creating space on your actual contact form that you can customize it to being a landing page. For example, if I wanted to do a contact form as a landing page, what I would do is have a full width text that's right underneath this section. So we're just gonna say example. I would have a few more questions that are key in the beginning. Then you would then go to content and then I could do two columns as the next section that gives more information. Have the rest of the questions go and then add another text box at the bottom. I would put my what's, what are my next steps right in here? This is how you make it into a landing page. The old school way of just having people put um, basic information into a contact form doesn't always convert. You wanna take advantage of the types of services you're offering and highlight this. So if I was a caterer, I would have this at the bottom and have a photo of one of my, my actual setups right in here. The next feature that is extremely helpful is the suggested versus custom options within HoneyBook. If you look here, when you do the plus, you have the questions and you have custom and you have suggested. The difference between custom is that you can customize those fields to ask questions that are not necessarily going to be put on the project level. So if you wanted to ask questions on what type of theme, that's not something that you would take the time to create as a project field. If you don't know how to create a project field, comment below in this video and say, project field so I can either do a YouTube short or another video about project fields in HoneyBook. But in your custom, you don't want these items to be pulled into every project. You just want it to be able to help you with giving the best quote. Suggested fields are going to be things that are going to be pulled directly into the project. So of course, the full name, the email, the phone number, about information, where did they find out about your company? What type of project type? Just like I said, the project type field, um, the location, and then the date. These are things that actually can get pulled into your project to help you with doing your booking a little bit better. So the difference between the suggested and custom is the suggested actually are things that get pulled directly into your project while your custom allows for you to ask questions to find out a little bit more from your client. And lastly, one of my favorite features about 
HoneyBook contact forms, it does allow for you to design it. You can add different colors. And I wanted the background color to be part of my brand color, which I would recommend. We do not need our brand to be like this rainbow of colors so that people don't recognize who you are and where you are. So you wanna use your brand colors and then you would choose it. So you see here, it changed the background to my brand colors. It also will allow for you to change your font, which gives you the ability to change the color. If it's bold, not the type of font, the size of the font, you can do all of that within your HoneyBook set. So we've been able to go through all of these great features. I wanted to go into what, in my opinion, granted, this might be different than your opinion, but in my opinion, these are some must-haves that you want to have on your contact form because this is what's going to help sell people on you. The first thing is that I recommend you having a header image within your brand. You can create these on Canva, Adobe, there's Pixar, a bunch of different platforms, or you might just pay someone on Fiverr to create it for you. Whatever way you go is up to you. But with that being said, I would highly recommend you doing a branded header because if you're using this as a landing page because you haven't set up your website yet, or you may be updating your website right now, you want to make sure that you're designing your actual landing page with the thought process. If I have this link in my bio that people aren't confused. This day and age, a lot of us have our guards up because there's a lot of spammers that are out there. Wanna make sure that you don't cause people to question if this is a realistic, if you're a real company or not. The next part that I would recommend you having on your contact form is a introductory paragraph. This is a game changer because you're able to introduce yourself to your new leads then they have the ability to hear about any other services that you have that you can put in bullet points. You don't need this to be this dissertation type of section, but you wanna have take the time to have some information about the different types of services that you offer. Because people wanna know who, more about you and what you actually do. So use this space wisely so that you're able to help people get excited about the opportunity to work with you. Thirdly, you want to have questions on your contact form so to help you weed out those that are not able to possibly afford your services by having an investment amount. So it might say services starting at this, catering starting at this, event services starting at this. I don't necessarily always think that you saying, hey, what is your budget? Because to be honest, a lot of people don't know what it really costs to do your service. So they can just be throwing out a number, knowing th they can just be throwing out a number thinking that this is a good number. In reality, it might be lowballing. So don't always take someone's filling out a number for face value because I've had it where someone says, hey, Jesse, I have this amount of money and they still spend two grand over that number <laughs> um, because they're just, they're just throwing out numbers. So you will have some people that are firm on their budget and you have others that just make up numbers um, because they think that it's a good number to throw out there. Lastly, the next part, I would make sure that's also in your contact form is going to be the next steps, just so that people know what is going to happen next. If you're using automations, you can have brochures and contact, you can have brochures and other supporting documents immediately go to a client. I like to state in the next step section what will be happening next. So if it's you'll receive a scheduling link or you'll hear from us within 24 hours, they will at least know what's going to be expected next. All in all, it's important to use your contact form because this helps you with collecting information, bringing people into your sales funnel, and it allows for you to pre-qualify people to work with you. You don't want to skip out on designing a well-designed contact form within HoneyBook because it can really help with your lead generation, which equals making more money. 
I hope that this video has been helpful for you. I would love for you to check out my last video that talks about brochures because I did mention how you can have a brochure automatically sent to a client after they complete your contact form. And it will actually go through the different steps so that you can design a great brochure within HoneyBook. I hope this video has been helpful for you in your business to market it in a way that's going to help you continue to make money.